I'm Jim. Welcome to my family's fish camp. Right now, we're getting our supply of winter food ready. I'm supposed to talk to you about the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, or ANCSA. But first, let me show you something. For most Alaska Natives, this is what ANCSA is all about, land. Alaska Native people have lived on this land for centuries. From the forests of southeast Alaska to the tundra of the Arctic coast, the land has always provided Native people with food, clothing, and a way of life. Grandpa mends our nets. He's been coming here to fish since he was a boy. My ancestors and the ancestors of other Alaska natives have come to fish this site for thousands of years. All across Alaska, Yupik, Inupiaq, Aleut, Athabascan, Tlingit, Haida, and Simshian people used the land for centuries without fear of losing it or having to prove that they owned it. But when these lands were claimed by the Russians and later sold to America in 1867, it became clear to Alaska Natives that something must be done to protect our right to the land. This is what we did. It took a hundred years and the need for Alaskan oil. But in 1971, the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act was passed by Congress. Many Alaskan Natives hoped that ANCSA would protect the land. Did it? Well, ANCSA did three things. First, it provided Alaska Natives with written title to 44 million acres of Alaska land. Written title means that we own the land outright and have the paperwork to prove it. Second, Alaska Natives traded their claim to the rest of Alaska for money, $962.5 million. Sounds like a lot of money, right? Works out to about $3 an acre. Third, ANCSA created special corporations or businesses to distribute and manage the land and the money. Sounds pretty simple so far. No? I didn't think so. Let's go over it one more time and then talk about the three main points of ANCSA. ANCSA provided Alaska Natives with title to 44 million acres of land, nearly a billion dollars, and special corporations to manage the land and the money. Land, cash, and corporations. That is ANCSA. Since you already know about the land and cash, all right. ANCSA established 13 regional native corporations, 12 in Alaska, and one for those Alaska natives living outside the state. They were formed as for-profit corporations, meaning they were supposed to make money. The corporations were formed following geographic and cultural boundaries as much as possible. Still, some regional corporations have more than one native group among their members. For example, the boundaries of Bristol Bay Native Corporation overlap at least three Alaska native groups, Aleut, Yupik, and Athapaskan. Within these 12 regions, more than 200 village corporations were also created. These village corporations provide control over ANCSA land and money on a local level. During the first two years after the passage of ANCSA, these 13 new regional corporations had to perform several difficult tasks First, we had to become businessmen and women and run these corporations. Then, we had to find, identify, and enroll all eligible Native Alaskans in their respective corporations. Finally, we had to select which lands we would receive as a result of the settlement. And, we had to do all of it during those first three years. What could we do? We did it. So after thousands of years as hunters, we were expected to become businessmen and women, land use planners, and private detectives. These files represent the private detective part. We had to find, identify, and enroll, or sign up, all eligible Alaska Natives. You're probably thinking to yourself, ah, no big deal. Just go out and sign them all up. Well, 
it turned out to be a big deal. First, we had to find eligible Alaskan natives who were scattered across the globe. Ads were placed in newspapers worldwide in an effort to track them down to notify them of the settlement. Upon enrollment, this is what we received from our new corporations. 100 shares of stock from our regional corporation, and, depending upon where we lived at the time of the settlement, 100 shares of stock from our village corporations. Not everyone joined a village corporation. For those that didn't, they got a larger share of the cash settlement. There were restrictions that came with this stock. It couldn't be sold, and it couldn't be given away, except through inheritance, until 1991, 20 years after the settlement was passed. The 20 years was to give us a chance to get on our feet and figure out how these corporations worked. The stock was our voice in the operation of the corporation and our share in the future. If the corporations did well, we were supposed to do well. Thank you. You're probably asking yourself, when is he going to start talking about the money? Well, how about right now? $962.5 million is a lot of money. Everybody thought that Alaska Natives were going to get rich. I thought I was going to get rich. It didn't quite work out that way. Why? First of all, the money was going to come from two sources, and it wasn't going to come all at once. $400 million was going to come from the U.S. government, but over an 11-year period. $562.5 million was going to come from the state of Alaska, from the sale of Alaska oil, after the pipeline was finished. But the pipeline didn't get finished until 1977, six years after ANCSA was signed. Also, most of this money went to the regional and village corporations. So how much money did someone like me actually get? About $353. Not even enough money to buy a new net like this one. I didn't get rich. The plan was for the regional and village corporations to use their part of the money to invest in existing businesses or start new businesses that would provide a share of the profits or dividends for the stockholders. As I told you at the beginning, for most Alaska natives, land is what ANCSA is all about. 44 million acres worth. Do you have any idea how big 44 million acres is? As you've been watching the scene, we've only shown you 5,000 acres. Showing you 44 million acres would take us weeks. Let's speed the camera up a bit so we can get an idea just how much land we're talking about. Four million acres is about 10% of Alaska, which doesn't seem like a lot, except that 10% of Alaska is bigger than the entire state of Washington. For the people, the land has many different values which were reflected in how the corporations chose their land. Some land was chosen for the money that could be made from it through lumber, mineral, or real estate development. Other lands were chosen for their cultural and subsistence values because they were important to us. But no matter what the reasons were for choosing the land, we were choosing to build our future and protect our heritage. It's hard to do both. Now, if you're an Alaskan native, you're probably thinking to yourself, hmm, 44 million acres divided by, oh, 80,000 native shareholders. That's about 550 acres per Alaskan native. So. Where's my land? Well, it didn't quite work out that way. Most of the land did not go directly to the people. The 44 million acres was divided roughly in half between the regional corporations and the village corporations to be used for the benefit of the shareholders. The 44 million acres of land were further divided into both surface rights and subsurface rights. Let me show you what I mean. This land, these trees, are owned by the village corporations, while the coal that's directly underneath it is owned by the regional corporations. According to ANCSA, village corporations own what's on top of the land they received, the surface rights, while the regional corporations own what's directly underneath the land, the subsurface rights. On the other hand, regional corporations own both what's on top of the land they received, the surface rights, and what's directly underneath the land, the subsurface rights. Why? Alaska's mineral and resource riches are scattered unevenly across the state. Some regional corporations got land rich in oil, coal, copper, and gold, while others didn't. To compensate for this inequity, 
ANCSA made a rule that requires each regional corporation to share 70 percent of the money made from developing its resources with the other regional corporations. That means that if my regional corporation suddenly found gold on its land and made money from it, 70 percent of the profit would be shared with the other regional corporations. This enables corporations with a vast wealth of resources to share with those corporations who are not so well endowed. ANGSO was meant to settle, once and for all, how much of this state Alaska's native people owned. It did that. It provided Alaska natives with legal title to 44 million acres of land, $962.5 million in cash, and corporations to manage the land in cash. But in doing this, it put the very lands this land that the people fought for at risk. How? Under ANCSA, almost all the land is owned by corporations. Corporations, like any business, can succeed or they can fail. But unlike other businesses, Alaska Native corporations list the lifestyle and inheritance of an entire race of people as their corporate asset. If the corporations fail, what will happen to this land? What do we do to protect the land? That's the question we have to face today. And what we decide will affect us for the rest of our lives.